Hey ladies, I'm sorry if the video is bumpy. I'm on my walk with my dog, Ember, getting in my exercise for the day. And I live in an area that intentionally keeps its roads made of this gravel here in Santa Fe. And supposedly this is the nice part of town. This is like where everybody wants to be, right? They love that old feel. You can see the houses are adobe. It's just a style. Anyway, I chose to come out and talk to you right now because I feel like this dry and arid landscape with these, um, with the ground like this reminds me of the desert. And so as the sun is setting here, I'm excited to give you your prompt. And it comes from Priscilla Shires, discerning the voice of God again, because I know that's why we're all here, to hear from Him. And I want to know, are you currently going through a desert season? And if you're not, think back to a time when you were going through a desert season. What is a desert season? Well, I guess it's kind of Christianese for a period of time where you feel like God isn't hearing you um, or he's not responding to you, you're not hearing him. Um, a time when you're in a waiting period that feels like it's gone, gone on too long. Um, I want to know, I want to know where you're at. Now in her study, Priscilla gives some amazing concepts about the desert season and why it's actually the most powerful time um, in a Christian's life, in a Christian walk. You may feel weak in this time, but you're gonna see some amazing things happening. So let me explain. So be careful with this prompt, okay? Because it can be really tempting to miss the entire point and just focus on the dryness of your dry season. Listen to these three concepts from Priscilla that are gonna shift the way you think about the dry season and make you answer the prompt differently. I know I and your teammates will be able to tell who listened to this because it really does make a big difference. Number one, God manifests his presence in the dry season. And she uses the example of Moses and you know Moses' story, I hope, brought into the family of the Pharaoh, um, eventually basically had him melt down and ran away into the desert because he didn't feel like he belonged, right? And he had, I guess, committed murder as well. He thought there was that too. Priscilla makes this amazing point that God didn't show up in the palace to Moses. He showed up in the desert to Moses. And she says, you don't find burning bushes in palaces. You find them in deserts. So while you're in the desert, make sure that you're focusing not on the situation itself or the different nuances of your desert life. Um, Priscilla says that the key moment, the key thing about this burning bush experience for Moses and for you, hopefully, is that he turned his attention to what God was doing. Um, he could have ignored it, but he decided to turn his attention to what God was doing. So are you looking for any single tiny little way that God is manifesting himself to you in this season? That is what she wants you to do. She says, God manifests himself in the dry season. Okay, number two, are you ready? God equips you in the dry season. So you've got to remember that the Bible is really clear that any struggle that we are going through is actually a way that God is refining our character, making us more usable for him. One of my favorite examples of this is actually Joyce Meyer, who is really public about her struggle as a girl who was sexually abused by her own father for many, many years until she finally got out of there. And 
she uses that testimony of how God was able through his word to renew her mind, help her to reclaim sanity and to function as a normal person. Um, and not just a normal person, if you ask me, an extraordinary person and one who can reach women that have gone through extreme tra uh, trauma in their lives. Um, love it. So how is he equipping you to serve other women? Um, think about that too. Okay, ready for number three? God is ch changing everything, carving a brand new path for you in the desert. And you probably know the story about how the Hebrew slaves were re released from Egypt and they were left to wander in the desert for 30 years before they were able to um, reach the promised land. And do you remember why they had to wander for so long? Was it because they had no God with them? No, God was there. Do you remember that? God was actually making his physical presence manifest in, in the form of, I think it was like a pillar by day. And you tell me, um, it, like God was very visible to them. Moses was meeting with God. You know what it was that held them back? It was their mindset. It was their fear and not trusting God for that next step. God is carving out a new path. So think about that too. What is God, what did God clear out of your life? What is he bringing to you instead? You know, the Job, um, the story of Job, how he lost everything and then God replaced it all and then some, right? Do you know that story? I hope you know these stories of um, the people in the Bible who went through the worst of the worst. Um, get to know them because this, these are our stories too. So tell us about your desert season and please do so with those three items in mind. I'd love to hear about how each of those things showed up for you. Or if you're in that desert season right now and you still have to make that mindset shift, um, how are you going to be watchful for those things? I think in the context of a morning routine, uh, you're gonna see amazing change. Like, you're gonna get quiet, you're gonna meet with the Lord, you're gonna talk to him about what we talked about today, and um, you're gonna start seeing all these changes happening. I really believe it.